Leah was the first wife of the Hebrew patriarch Jacob and foremother of six of the twelve tribes of Israel, described in the book of Genesis. Leah was wed to Jacob through an act of deception by her father Laban. Jacob soon married her beautiful sister Rachel as well. And Leah suffered for years, feeling unloved compared to her younger sibling. But yet she was a loyal wife and fertile mother. She also faithfully followed Jacob, risking her father's wrath when Jacob was suddenly called by God to leave Haran and return to Canaan. In the rabbinical tradition, Leah receives much praise for her role as ancestor of kings, prophets, priests and sages as well, for her life of prayer which merited her being married to the father of the Israelites. She was the mother of Judah and thus the foremother of the Jewish people in general. Traditionally, it is through Leah's lineage that the Messiah will appear and in Christian faith, she is seen as the ancestor of Jesus Christ. In the biblical account, Jacob travels to the hometown of Laban, the brother of his mother Rebecca, to avoid being killed by his brother Esau. At a well used to water the local flocks, he encounters Laban's younger daughter Rachel, tending her father's sheep, and decides to marry her. He proceeds to work seven years for Laban in order to marry Rachel. After the seven years are over, a great feast is held. Laban, however, switches Rachel for Leah, and it is thus Leah who spends the wedding night with Jacob. The text does not explain how such a thing could transpire, except to say in the morning, Laban justifies himself on the grounds that it is uncustomary to give the younger daughter in marriage before the older one. He offers to give Rachel to Jacob in marriage in return for another seven years of work. Jacob accepts, spending the week with Leah exclusively and then marrying Rachel as well. Few physical details are given concerning Leah's appearance. While Rachel is described as beautiful, Leah's eyes are described with a word that could mean either tender or weak. In the early years of the sister's marriage, it is obvious that Jacob loves Rachel more than Leah. However, God sympathizes with Leah and gives her four sons in quick succession. These are Reuben, Simeon, Levi and Judah. We get a glimpse into Leah's character by responses, each of which is also a pun on a baby's face. Reuben, it is because the Lord has seen my misery, surely my husband will love me now. Simeon, because the Lord heard that I am not loved, he gave me this one too. Levi, now at last my husband will become attached to me because I have borne him three sons. Judah, this time I will praise the Lord. The text here tells us that this time Leah stops having children, although later we found out that the situation is only temporary. Rachel seeing that she is unable to conceive, offers her handmaid Bilhal as a third wife to Jacob. She names and raises the two sons, Dan and Naphtali. Leah responds by offering her handmaid Zilpah as a fourth wife to Jacob. She names and raises the two sons, Gad and Asher, that Zilpha bears. One day, Leah's firstborn Reuben returns from the field with mandrakes for his mother. Rachel believing the roots will solve her fertility problem, Leah responds angrily to her rival, Wasn't it enough that you took away my husband? Will you take my son's mandrakes too? And Rachel offers to trade her knight with her husband in return for the mandrakes. Leah agrees and that night she conceived Issachar and she also gives birth to Zebulun. After the sixth son, the long-suffering Leah declares, this time, my husband will treat me with honor. Finally, after six males, Leah finally gives birth to a daughter, Dina. After that, it is said that God remembers Rachel and gives her a son, Joseph. God has taken away my disgrace. During all this time, about 14 years, Leah had been living on her father's land. However, when it came time for Jacob to leave, Laban insisted on another seven years' labor for him. In the 21st year, God called Jacob to return to Canaan. Meanwhile, during the last seven years, Jacob had cleverly built up his own flocks, while Laban had not done nearly so well. Jacob sent for Leah and Rachel and shared God's revelation with them. I have seen all that Laban had been doing to you. I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed a pillar and where you have made a vow to me. Now leave this land at once and go back to your native land. Jacob planned to depart immediately, knowing that Laban would accuse him of theft and breaking his agreement. Leah and Rachel replied, Do we still have any share of this inheritance of our father's estate? 
Does he not regard us as foreigners? Not only has he sold us, but he has also used up and what was paid for us. Surely all the wealth that God took away from our father belongs to you and our children. So do whatever God has told you. Leah quickly gathered her children and belongings and joined Jacob. Together with Joseph and the slaves to leave for Canaan, the families apparently did not live in immediate proximity. For only after three days does Laban realize the great caravan, not to mention his daughter and grandchildren had gone. He did not overtake the group until they had reached the hill country of Gilead to the east of the Jordan River. Despite her giving Jacob six sons and a daughter, Leah continues to play the role of a lesser wife to Rachel. Thus, when Jacob stations his family in ranks to meet the possible threats of Esau's approach, he placed the female slaves and her children in front, making them the most vulnerable to any harm, followed by Leah and her children, and the last of all Rachel and Joseph. Even after Jacob's successful union with Esau and the settling of their family in Sheshem, Leah's trials are not over. Her beloved daughter Dina is raped by the son of Sheshem king, Hamar. Although the young preparator himself named Shehem tries to make things right by marrying her, and Leah's sons are filled with grief and fury, Jacob agrees to the marriage, but his sons add the stipulation that the Shishamites must be circumcised first. While the men of the town are recovering from their wounds, Leah's sons Simeon and Levi attack and carry out a mass slaughter. Having alienated the neighboring people by this behavior, the family then moves to Bethel. On the way, Rachel has a second son Benjamin, but she dies giving birth to him. Thus Leah had finally achieved the status of a primary wife, but apparently without ever fully recounseling with her younger sister. Leah is traditionally thought to be buried in the cave of the patriarchs in Hebron. According to Genesis 49:32, Jacob states, "There Abraham and his wife Sarah were buried, there Isaac and his wife Rebekah were buried." and there i buried leah leah's descendants are listed in genesis 35:23 and again in genesis 46:15 while her adopted descendants through zilpha are given in genesis 35:26 and genesis 46:18 as the mother of judah she became the foremother of the tribe of judah and thus virtually all jews she is also the foremother of all the davidic kings of the kingdom of judah since it is traditionally believed that the Messiah will be descended from Judah, this would make Leah the foremother of the Messiah. Thanks for watching. If you like to see more content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.